All right, everybody, welcome to a special weekend edition of the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli, with me as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. And we felt like we needed to do a, a weekend episode. We were going to do it after the game. I think both of us were just so like frustrated, annoyed, and a little bit tired. We're like, well, let's just, be, let's just wait. Let's just give it a day. I'm kind of glad we did. Uh, well, maybe not 100% glad because the news we got out of uh, Frankie wasn't the best. Yeah. So we'll get a, get to Pablo Francois. We'll get to the game against Edmonton. And we also wanted to get it in because they have another game on Sunday, which we'll be talking about on Monday. So we didn't want to have a, a load of uh, you know games to talk about jamming it into one episode. So first things first, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Follow the show, social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche, Twitter, Lockdown Avalanche, Instagram, questions, comments, concerns, opinions, Lockdown Avalanche at gmail.com and follow the show on our YouTube channel over on the YouTube, hit subscribe and get notified whenever a new show goes live. All right, we'll get to the game uh, next. First, I think we have to talk about Pavel Francis because within the first couple minutes of the game, freak accident redirected puck goes into the bench where he's sitting and he he's he leaves the bench he leaves the bench with a towel on his face uh later on you saw jack johnson kind of like talking to darcy kemper about it and he was like uh, pointing to like right with his <laughs> cheekbone like didn't look too good and again because we, we waited a day to do this episode we know that he's gonna be out uh we i don't think that we were looking we didn't find anything like concrete in terms of if they're saying week to week day to day month to month or whatever but they called up eustace Anunin, and so that that's not a good sign no you, you're if you're the avalanche like you're you're not i mean you're resting guys that have minor aches and pains just to give them the time needed and here's Pavel Francos minding his own business. And now it's up in the air if he's going to be available for any point in the postseason. Is it is is the the curse of the avalanche injuries like starting to come back at the worst possible time? This one you kind of freak out about. This is the one position we didn't address or have to address at the trade deadline. Like you honestly felt good with what we had in the stable of goalies. And if you would have told me this is how we would sustain an injury, like we were in the middle of the Twitter space. Like we had like Nick and Bailey and cinnamon bun, everybody talking. And it was one of those that everybody's like, did you just see what happened? Uh, it was just out of nowhere. And then it took a couple replays and in intermission show before you really realized. And then you saw Jack Johnson's reaction. And you know, okay, this isn't good. And then you wake up with the news, oh, hey, Eustace is on the way. And you're like, this is not good at all. And now this is like shades of the <laughs> bubble. And now what do the Avalanche do? And this isn't just a, an old backup. You know what I mean? This is Pablo Francois. This is maybe yeah. the most reliable backup in the league. And we've said that many times, he's that guy that <clears throat> if you, you want to put him in, um not not you maybe just to give Kemper a rest but just this nice flow that the two of them have they're just going back and forth Kemper's playing a couple games give him a rest and put Francois in and know that you're not going to miss a beat so now and normally in the playoffs you ride your your horse you know for the majority of the playoffs and I and I was really kind of looking forward to seeing like how Jared mm -hmm. Bednar was going to play that because you have a very capable backup. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm sure a lot of it would depend on if they were up in the series, if they were down in the series, clearly it's, it's, it's contingent upon how they're playing, but yeah, if you have a two Oh lead in a series, I maybe you throw in Francois for a game, give Kemper I, who knows you could, do, yeah. <clears throat> we say all the time, Jared Bednar can, can kind of just mix and match lines and that's true for the goalie situation as well. He could put Pablo Francois in whenever he wants to, and you feel good that you're going to get a good performance and you have just as a good opportunity to win as Kemper does. Now, if this, if this is longer term than the Avalanche are, are anticipating, 
this is Darcy Kemper's show, and that's a lot of weight to put on him. Especially like if let's just say this freak injury didn't happen, this would probably be a Frankie start against Winnipeg. Great. Darcy gets a, a night to, a night off. And then he comes back playing a really hot St. Louis team. Now, with Eustace coming up, you're very kind of cautious to put him in there. So now you have Darcy coming off a loss, Darcy playing against Winnipeg, and then Darcy going against St. Louis. And you're also putting strain on Darcy Kemper for this last stretch. Like, it's it's St. Louis, Nashville, Minnesota. Those are not easy opponents. and this is quote unquote garbage time. We don't need to go down two goalies and then have Eustace and in and, and then hope everything with Patrick was not bitter. Hey, you want to be an e-bug? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I mean, it, everything was set up nice. Everything because that's been the rub on, on Kemper as well is, is, you know, injuries. Mm-hmm. And now he's in a situation where he he's getting, you know, uh, he, we're not wearing him out. No. And, you know, and, and I think the numbers show that it's working. Uh, what do you do? What do you do with, with Eustace? Do you, do, do you play him these last few games? If you know that, that Fransos is going to be out for a while, do you throw Anunen in there just to be like, Hey, you, you got to get some games under your belt because if by chance we need you in the postseason, we don't want that to be your first uh, I mean, I know he's played in the past, but it's been a little while since he's been up to the NHL, and it wasn't yeah, he, the, the best go of it when he was up there. He, so, did you throw him in there to get him, get him, you know, some, you know, dip his toe in the water? He has the one win against Philly, and if you want to throw him in, like honestly, he came in short notice. I'd say throw him in against Winnipeg short notice. Winnipeg and, and Philly is kind of the same quality caliber team. Give him the same kind of setup and just say, hey, go at it, young man. And you're mm-hmm. still giving Darcy a little bit of a rest for that St. Louis game coming up. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We've lost three in a row. Um, well, that's the worst. <laughs> Four in a row is the worst that could happen. And I think that's why maybe they don't do it. I think they want to stop the bleeding for a losing streak, especially now. You know what I mean? After this, you only have – three, four games left, uh, three or four. Um, and you don't want these stories of in, or questions of the avalanche heading into the, like we were flying high, things were looking good and you still have to take everything that's happening, you know, with a grain of salt because you are still missing key players. You are letting guys rest, but at the same time, they're not, they haven't played well the past couple of games. Like that can't be ignored. And I, and I, what I like about this team is like, they know that, you know, just because they're, they're not playing well, uh, doesn't mean they're like, oh, well, I guess we're just not playing any well at, or well anymore. And uh, that's just the way it is. No, like they are getting down on themselves, not down on themselves. They're getting hard on their on themselves. And they know that if they come out and play better. And that's what I like about this team that they probably will. So yes, they don't have anything to play for other than the president's trophy. And, you know, they have the West wrapped up. And but you still want to play well while you are resting some guys, letting some guys heal up. Uh, but you don't want an extended losing streak at the same time. If they had won just one of these games, uh, maybe they do throw Yusuf Sandin in there just to get them some some time. But I don't think they do would, right now. I would much rather take a four game losing streak right now than a four game losing streak as soon as we get into the playoffs with Darcy Kemper being a one man show. Because yeah. honestly, that's what it's turned into. We lost the backup. We lost our every other night goalie setup. And it's it's the Darcy Kemper show. And guess what? We can't lose Darcy Kemper now, especially in garbage time. Um, like if he goes out against Dallas, like we don't know how bad this is with Frankie. And if he's coming back and it's Darcy and Eustace. And yeah. if you lose Darcy, you, you were talking about you don't want the avalanche answering all these questions. They will have every question in the world to answer if they lose Darcy as well. And it's the useless and in show going into this playoffs. Yeah. That's Can you what imagine? I'm scared of. Can you yeah. imagine? <clears throat> uh, maybe they just use him. Like just, just imagine he's, he's Francois. And if we were going to play Francois, we're going to play Anunin. 
you know, maybe, yeah. and maybe just, just do it just because like you said, you have nothing to, to, to lose. The only thing you have to gain is the president's trophy and maybe uh, Florida kind of has that wrapped up at this point. I, I mean, I, not a hundred percent, obviously, but you know, you're, you're kind of taking a step back. I think if you, you can put him in there and you can still play a good game and walk away from, even if you lose, if you yeah. walk away from it and say like, okay, we played a good game. And being down the guys that were down, if, if we had them, that would have put us over the top. I can live with that. Yeah, I can't live with how they played against Edmonton. I can't like that. That performance needs to get better uh, against Seattle. That has to get better against yeah. Washington. OK, like that, that was a, a, a good game. Like I thought you played a good game and you had an opportunity to win it. And that's a game that you just lost. That's hot. Yeah. But the other two, and- not so not so much. Both of those games were 3-2 losses, Washington, Seattle. Seattle. Seattle was a lesser opponent, and you shouldn't have lost that game. This Edmonton game, there was nothing good about it, not a single thing. And when it comes to Winnipeg, like, Eustace isn't a bad goalie. Like, like we're let's not talk like we're putting Michael Hutchinson back in there. This is uh, this is Eustace in it. Like, he's the reason the Eagles are where they are when it comes to their the, the playoffs. So... Eustace is going to be serviceable, but I think honestly, what the prop, the best way to help Eustace is the b- best way to say this. The best way to help Eustace, we have to start scoring again mm-hmm. and start really tilting the ice again, where teams really don't have that motivation to score because we're up six to one, like going into the third period. Mm-hmm. You take a lot of that out, you take the pressure off the goalie help you sis by scoring yeah well Arlen, let's talk about that let's get to this edmonton game uh but first let's hear from built bar the best tasting protein bar on the market and have oh there they are kyle's still got the box front and center they've got always it. got my back yeah. <laughs> uh and if you have not tried built bar what are you waiting for if you have not tried built bar puffs what are you waiting for if you are a marshmallow fan like my man kyle here is uh, you are in luck. It's the first ever protein infused marshmallow protein bar. They're fluffy, marshmallowy, and they are more than just a protein bar. They are a treat and covered in 100% real chocolate. They come in flavors like cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, and banana cream pie. The regular built bars come in flavors like mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and something that they, they had. I think they had a white chocolate up there. They recently. did. Yeah. So they always are coming out with like limited edition flavors and they're usually always fantastic. And it's, it really helps if you go online and when you're putting in that promo code, put your email address in there and get those emails. Cause you get updates on new flavors all the time. Yes. And with the seasons changing, there might be some newer, newer flavors coming out as well. So yeah. go to built.com that website that Kyle's talking about, use the promo code locked 15 and you get 15% off of your order. Once again, the promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, we don't want to talk about it, but we have to talk about it. Uh, The Avalanche and the Edmonton Oilers. And this one went Edmonton's way. The other two went to the Avalanche. Uh, one, one was overtime and one was shootout. I believe. Yeah. One was overtime. One, one was shootout against Edmonton. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this time Edmonton took care of business in regulation. And I, I, when, when you lose two in a row, to me, it's just like the thing that you want to do is get that first goal. You, you always yeah. want to get that first yeah. goal clearly. But when you, when you're, you're, you know, coming into a game, you don't want to lose three in a row. You're on the road. You're against a good team, a team that you've beaten twice already. Uh, and when you're in in their arena, like you want to get that first goal, and that's what the Avalanche did. It was the only goal in the first with Val Nachuskin, who continues to be incredible for this season for, for the Avs. Yeah. And then it's the, in that second, the wheels just came off, and it was a tale of two teams between that first period where things looked good. Like mm-hmm. I said, it looked great, but things looked good. You're like, okay, like they got that first goal. They got out of the first period when you're on away ice. I think I was feeling good. And then it became like the Evander Kane show. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it was just, yeah. it was tough. 
I was sitting there and I, I even said it out loud in the in the Twitter space, are we really going back and forth between Evander Kane and Valeria Nachushkin for a hat trick right now? Right. Yeah, that'd be nice. And it was a weird moment to sit in, and then Evander Kane finally pulls through, and you're like, okay, it's gonna be one of those games. And sure enough, it was. It's it's one of those that when you look at the stats, not one single thing the Avalanche did outweighed anything Edmonton did. Botched six power plays. Looked better, but looks can be deceiving. If you're not like if you're not putting anything on the board, you had six chances. But not and more than that, man. Like that five on three that they had. Oh, a lot of people are talking about that, and rightly so. You had a minute and well, I mean, you had <clears throat> it was like eleven seconds or something at the end of the first. Mm-hmm. So carried over into the second. I think you had like a minute and like 15 seconds, or it, it was a good chunk of time. And it looked like a it looked like a five on four power play. Yeah. The avalanche, like they were they were passing the puck around at the blue on a five on three. You have to like maneuver your way in closer and closer and make those defenders just be spinning around. And I've never seen a player uh like Leon Dreisidel play a penalty kill like he plays on a penalty kill it seemed yeah. like anytime he just he would just jam his stick out and the puck would tip off a stick and go out and out of the zone and that yeah. happened on multiple times it was incredible to watch i hated it because it wasn't my team but that five on three you you have you have i don't even think they got a shot on net it was reminiscent of 2016 2017 because like we we had a couple of those 2016 2017 we could like convert and when I saw that, I was like, oh, every ghost of Avalanche Pass is rearing its ugly head when it comes to injuries, not converting five on threes, bad power plays. Uh, the faceoffs were, were not – like the ones that mattered were not winning. Um, the physicality, like everything that we talked about before in previous iterations of the Avalanche all came back to haunt us in that Edmonton game. Mm. And it's not the game you want to have. Like you want to have that McDavid – McKinnon conversation this is not the game you want to point to because like even though they weren't really either one of them didn't have an impact on this game and we want to talk about depth all day long with the avalanche it was the depth of Edmonton that actually won the game for him yeah well McDavid did have three assists and Drysdale had an assist so he kept him off the board in terms of you know, a goal scoring goals. Yeah. 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 You get Evander Kane with three uh, Yamamoto. I, I, I love him. Yeah. He plays this, a, a tough, gritty game. Yeah. Um, and, and when, when his goal went in, you're just like, uh, he, he did that Nathan McKinnon, like backhand, uh, his, you know, his backs to the goal and you just kind of fire it back in and it just went right through Kemper's legs. And you're like, all right, this is, this is over. But he, the, the Nachuskin goal, uh, who's Evan Bouchard scored, the second goal for Edmonton to go up two to one. And then 15 seconds later, and that's mm-hmm. what you want to see. Like, you're like, okay, like now they're battling back. Now, now they lost the lead and they, they tied it back up like that. And that's yeah. what this team can do. And then it was Kane with two goals in a row, um, what, seven, eight minutes apart from each other, but whatever. Um, and when that happened, like the, when the Vander Kane, the, the second of Vander Kane, the third of Vander Kane goal, I should say, went in. Um, and then in the third, the Yamamoto one that just took this wind out of the sails. It, it just seemed, it just seemed like, all right, no matter what we do, we're always playing from behind in this game and we're not going to be able to overcome this. And that's kind of the mentality that I feel like they had against Seattle. And you don't want to have that yeah. against Seattle. Like no. you gave up three goals in that game. Fine. It's going to be tough to come from, back from that, but you can do that. And uh, you can do that against Seattle. And against Edmonton, yeah, it's a little bit more of a tall task, and it's just it's just not likely going to happen. Um, we'll go ahead, and then we'll talk about some of the big problems here. Go ahead. Yeah, I I feel like the Avalanche really have a um, – it's a Pokemon reference, but they have the escape rope. Like, ever since we clinched and put a letter next to every one of our social media names, mm. I feel like the Avalanche, like, if it gets – where you really have to like tighten up your bootstraps and fight for this win, the avalanche are like, okay, well, this is going to be rough. If it happens, it happens. There's not that, that extra push. Right. And that's, that's been severely lacking. You saw it in Seattle 
and boy was it in Edmonton. <laughs> well, the, the, and and they're saying they're going to say all the right things. Like mm -hmm. they're not, especially Nathan McKinnon. You know, everybody knows that they need to play better, and they should mm -hmm. be playing better. Don't, you can't have the excuse of um, Landon Scott not being there, Eric Johnson not being there, Devon Taves not being there. Clearly, they are big pieces, and will make games like this look different. Mm -hmm. But you should still be able to to win these games and compete a little bit better. Now they did have that Val Nachuskin goal or, or not goal. It was kind of sitting on the goal line. I don't know. Yeah. That thing just stopped dead in its tracks and you just could not see, you couldn't see it underneath. Um, uh, who's it? Mike Smith, right? He's Mike Smith. Yeah. yeah. Um, you couldn't see it under the, the glove. That wasn't going to be a goal, unfortunately. Uh, so that one wasn't there, but you look at like the, the big problem for me is, is the defense, the yeah. offense, they're not scoring. Okay. Like, but they're, what they have 37 shots on goal. All right. They're, they're, this team is always going to generate chances. They always are. The defense struggled mightily in this game mightily. Yeah. And it's not, I'm not to the point of, major concern or anything like that because again i feel like when this team plays bad they get called out and they know they need to play better but i this uh josh manson did not have a good game no. sam gerard did not have a good game and i'm pretty sure those two were paired together mm -hmm. um and curtis mcdermott did not have a good game and that's what you're going to get from him yes we love to sing his praises when he has a good game but at any point it could implode for him and it did. It did. Th this defense, a total minus seven on the day. And and everybody was minus except for Val Nechuskin, who was plus one. Everybody else who was, was in a plus or a minus was a minus in this game. So yeah. it was bad across the board. But the defense, I think the defense just got worn down by a very good offense in Edmonton. And that and that includes one Kale McCarr. And he he did not have a good game either. Uh, points wise, well, he just had the assist, right? Yeah, he well, won assist, but um, but he's a defenseman first, and when it comes to his defensive play, it was not his best game, yeah, at all. And we were talking about like the injuries and those that are resting. EJ and Devontae's, when they come back, they will make a difference. Those sure. are two anchors on two shifts of the defense, but. Um, I love the manimal. He did not have a good game. No. And everyone and everyone seems lost. Um, yeah, you well, see a lot I, of those, you see a lot of those goals where Miko is the last avalanche player you see on a goal. Or you see like you'll see JT covering. You see, you're seeing like a forward in the yeah. last last shot of the replay, not a defenseman in sight. Bo overcommitted to a play uh to a pass. And I think it was it was Bo came out and then Manson came in behind him and left the entire backside of the net completely open for a wide open goal. Like it, just everybody forgetting where they're supposed to be, knowing where they're supposed to be and who's with them is a that was a huge problem in the Edmonton game. And, and we're not even talking about Miko, how he hasn't been there the past mm -hmm. two games. Too. He's, he has had that illness, so he didn't play again. Again, okay, you can you can kind of like take keep that in the back of your head. It's like, okay, we're missing a lot, but you can still not like how this team played. And mm -hmm. I, I am a big Sam Gerard fan and I don't, you know, I, I'm not in that group of people who are, you know, just totally given up on him. Um, he didn't have a good game, but th there something is missing with Sam Gerard. Yeah. It's that like playmaking ability that he can have. He doesn't, he, he it's almost like he's afraid to shoot. Yeah. Like he's, and, and he's in on that second power play that and, and maybe he doesn't have his, you know, his, his battery mate with uh, Devon Taves, how they run that kind of like slingshot play. And, and usually it's Taves getting like the shot off, but Sam Gerard is just not active enough on the offensive end. And I'm not asking him to be Cal McCarr, yeah. but he's had some open ice and he just refuses to shoot. Like he's yeah. looking for a pass uh, and I know he's not a scoring machine in terms of goals, but if you're given the room, take the damn shot, man. Especially when 
uh, in games like this where Nathan McKinnon also is doubting his shot a little bit, you saw it on the power play. Um, and where he would cycle back to there was a lot of pass back between McKinnon and Gerard, McKinnon, Gerard, and then it's like yeah. someone take a shot, just shoot. like I, it's fine, like especially Nathan McKinnon. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I mean, he did get the one goal. Uh, was that on the pat? No, I mean, that was in the goal he was pulled, I think, when he scored his goal. McKinnon did, but. Yeah, on the power play, I sometimes I feel like McKinnon wants he'll only take that slap shot if he knows like the the goalie is a little bit out of position and he can like sneak one by him. When sometimes you just have to take the shot, and that's why the guys in front are there to do some dirty work, mm-hmm. clean up, just take it. And maybe you can get it by him because you have a wicked slap shot. So yeah, who knows what's gonna happen? But you've seen him like if it's not like that perfect pass from whoever so if it's from miko it's from kale and now if it's from kadri and they're running that play a little bit more where kadri just takes that really quick one time early in the slot i love that yeah um so you're seeing more because you need that because everybody's looking for nathan mckinnon to take the shot yeah. everybody is so i like that they're kind of giving different looks but yeah i i just want to see more more shots on that so guys like nichus can can clean up and maybe because landis Cog's not there maybe they're a little bit afraid to i don't know i hope not yeah you 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 kind of hope nathan mckinnon you, you hear all the time that he loses his mind in practice if the pass isn't exactly on his tape like yeah, which... he wants everything a certain way but i hate to break it to him the nhl you can't make it a certain way for your liking it's how you respond when you don't get the pass that way and you have to fight for it and you don't get set up in the right spot or if that defenseman knows exactly that it's coming to you, take that shot a little earlier than you want. Like that is what you want. And mm-hmm. Nathan McKinnon needs to honestly, he needs to take it. This is his team right now. Like mm-hmm. nobody's challenging him. This is his team. Take the ball I mean, and run with it a little bit. And we and we say, you know, he did have seven shots on goal. He's going to get his shots on goal, but there's ones like you know, he's selective about them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just don't be selective. No. Just know, be okay with, okay, I know I'm just going to rip this thing and it's, it won't go in, but maybe it'll get a freakish rebound. Who <laughs> knows what happens? That's, you know, the, the randomness of hockey. Ovi is the only player who could pick exactly what shot he is. He's going to take, and everyone knows what shot he's going to take. You just got to get in the way. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Here from Bet Online, and then uh, where the abs go from here. So, betonline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. It's your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs to esports and more. So, head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. That's betonline.net. It's where the game starts. All right. So, yes, Avalanche with a three-game losing streak. We had – well, we should probably do our, uh, mm-hmm. our sound check. We didn't, we didn't get to that. So, um, our, our songs that we have uh, handpicked to summarize the action against Edmonton, and uh, you can follow this set list over on Spotify. Just search for L-O-P-N sound check. And every time the Avs play, win or lose – Kyle and I will pick a song that best describes all the action. So go ahead, sir. I love yours for today. Even though it's in a loss, I love it. Go ahead. A good, like, kind of indie hardcore punk band, Vitamin X. It's just bad trip. This is a bad road trip. <laughs> and bad it's, trip. <laughs> and it's one of those, it's yelly, it's screamy. You read the lyrics, you're like, okay, I understand. This is a bad trip. And honestly, after that game... Like you, you made all of the excuses you possibly could, and you're just like, "This is just frustrating." And that's exactly what "Bad Trip" is from Vitamin X, and it's a one minute song too. Actually, it's less than that. I think it's like fifty three seconds or something. Like that. You can make but, it a ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those commercials where you have to like, you'd, you'd pay ninety nine cents for like, oh. and they'd give you like three or four ringtones. It's like texts yeah. Such, something, yeah, something we for, were literally talking about that in our twitter space like text 72 71 yes or, yeah like mambo number five <laughs> exactly but then you'd like text it wrong and you get like a bulldog background yeah, for your phone. oh man that's great <laughs> uh for me i went with a, a band that I, I i first 
saw wow you know when you go to like these festivals like mm-hmm. and, and there's there's like 30 bands that are there and you know as you, as the the font get or the the, the text <laughs> size gets smaller uh you've never heard of them before so uh th- this was this was oh my god back in the 2000s in that era and uh i can't remember the name of the festival was but the band was called shooty's groove and this was when uh like like rap rock was like really kind of mm. big it not not like rage against the machine like worst worst like rage against the machine is like one of my favorites but like wannabe rage against the machine uh bands like biscuit like, yeah yeah like you know, you know these rap style lead singers and then you know rock music behind it so uh that's what they are but they're really really good um yep. and they have this this one song called l train uh, which was their big hit they actually were were if if you listen to it might ring a bell or two because it did get the rounds on the radio um and then like me and my friends became like shooty groove fanatics after that because they, they were so good live <laughs> and uh th- they've broken up since then who knows where the hell they are now but yeah you're airbrushed in your own shooty groove yes yeah, exactly <laughs> uh, so yeah they have a song called l train and i figured it was you know it fits the vibe right now with the as on a, on a three game losing streak. So um, I wanted to use it for some other team. Maybe if like we, we had given like Minnesota a three or four game losing streak, give it to them, but yeah, it's appropriate for the avalanche right now. So great song. Go check it out. It's over on the set list right now. Um, all right, but we got Winnipeg. So hopefully we're going to do another sound check on Monday for Monday show. Hopefully we can get back into the win column and do a, a songs, you know, that symbolize a win for the avalanche. I'm not, uh, and I've talked to people online who kind of like message me and like, Oh, are you concerned? Are you concerned? Like, no, I'm not, I'm not concerned for a number of reasons. Like all those guys that were missing. Yeah. Like we want to get them back, but I also think we're running out of running out of games here to get them back and just get a few games under their belt. And we were saying this about, um, Gabe Landeskog, when he went out, you want him to come back in like the last week to get a few games under his belt. You don't want him, his first game back to be game one, round one, you know, because you might need a few games to just get your legs back. And the Avs have a handful of guys that are out. I want to start seeing them again. If they're okay to play, if they're hurt, fine, let them rest up. But if they can come back for like two games, that's all I'm asking for. Because you need that. You can see like the, the, like the, the, you know, the lines they're putting together, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. The, the defensive pairings that they're putting together, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And with the guys that you're missing, you know where, they, where they're slotted in. And you know yeah. that, who they can work together with. And that's what is going to make this team much better and play much better than they are right now. When it comes to this Winnipeg game, like I know you said you're not concerned. I am a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. When Bo Byram came back, it's not really the same Bo Byram. When Sammy G came back, it's not really the same Sammy G. And I have a feeling that with this little skid that we're on, that we're kind of over-glorifying the return of Landeskog, it's going to take him a minute. He's not going to come in and score four goals. Like, Bo's still trying to get back to 100%. Sammy G's still getting there. Who knows what's going on with Miko when he comes back? Is he going to be winded? What's going on there? Like, when they come back, it's not going to be a flip of the switch. So what you're seeing now is the team we're going to have for a little while. And what you're seeing, especially like face-offs, what comes to the power play, how the defense is playing, one, that's you can forgive. Two, you point out the flaws. Three, that's a bad habit. You want to see these end in this fourth game. They've been picking up some bad habits, and it's steadily getting worse, as you can see by the score. And Winnipeg's a good opponent to get everything going back in the right direction because you don't get adjustment time against St. Louis, Nashville, and Minnesota. So if you're going to correct it, it's in Winnipeg. If we drop this Winnipeg game, who? That's, yeah. I mean, whew. like they were saying on the broadcast, I just haven't had a three-game losing streak since October. So that's kind of why I'm not like in panic mode or anything like that. Um, You don't want to see them play like this. Mm. But like I said before, like this is a team that knows this is not us. 
Like yeah. let, let's let's we we know we need to play better, guys. Let's let's just do it. Let's just play better. We need to. So I think that's why. Like I'm really looking forward to seeing how they respond being down three to nothing or, th- or three games, uh, three game losing streak, because there's going to be times where they're, they're They play poorly in the postseason, and you want to stop that at one game. Yeah. You can't have three game losing streaks in the postseason. No, you know what I mean, you can't do it. So if you have a one game losing streak, you need to turn it around right then and there. And you thought, okay, we lost against Washington. You know, the next game is against, seattle we can turn it around and they didn't okay all right now we got a two game lose maybe it's just because it's the regular season and again you don't have a ton to play for but i still just go to the, the fact of like you at least you, you need to show up yeah and i don't feel like they really did in edmonton so and- that's where the concern lies is is the 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 compete level um even though not a ton is on the line you don't want to go into the playoffs. I hate to use the term limping, but yeah, you know, limping would be like you're, you have a lot of injuries, but it also could be like you're just flat out not playing well. So turn it around right now. Yeah, and you mentioned like we haven't had a three game losing streak since October. Guess what happens when you lose four games in the playoffs? You're out. And we always say this team is made for the playoffs. It's because we haven't been eliminated. Like we haven't had a streak where we're eliminated. Yeah. Like you got to, you got to put it together. You've got to adjust and you've got to fix things. We've always said they're really good about making adjustments and course correcting and fixing and winning in all these different ways. Why stop now? Hmm. So let's get things right against Winnipeg. Let's get our swagger back and let's tackle the rest of the West. I agree. I agree. And, and, and I think, you know, we talked a lot about the, the defense and I think that is I have mm. one major area of concern. It's that mm-hmm. it's the defense, and um, you know they they absolutely need to play a lot better. And that, and again, <clears throat> we didn't really talk about Darcy Kemper all that much. Not his best game either. Um, a lot of times we can say, well, the defense let him down. Um, yeah, that's true in some aspects. <clears throat> and I was never a goalie, but you know when a goalie is way out of position. Oh and my! There were multiple times on on. Yeah, these these Euler goals where Kemper was just I don't know I, maybe the lighting was horrible in there and he he was or or maybe just because McKinnon is a bl- or uh, McDavid is a blur he could he was just seeing flash streaks in front I don't know but there were multiple goals where he was way out of position and you know a team like Edmonton is going to put those away. Yeah, I said during the Edmonton game he looked like when you're playing NHL 22 online and you're the goalie, and you're so bored back there because nothing's happening, you put the controller down, and you realize things are happening, you pick up the controller and just, like, you're flying all over the place because you're trying to get your bearings. Darcy was all over the place, like, really, really bad. Not just picking little things here. Like, it was egregious. Yeah, it was bad. Um, So, this will be a – you hope this will be a useless thing going into Winnipeg, too. Well, if we get a Darcy redemption and he's falling apart now, wake no, me up when I, September I, ends. I, I just, I have confidence in this team that when they play poorly, um, they don't stand for that. You know what I mean? So they're not a team that's just like, oh, that, you know, that, that team, they're not sitting there saying Edmonton's better than us. Yeah. They're not sitting there. They're saying like, we, we let Edmonton roll us over. And we can't have that. So yeah, I mean, guys are going to have bad team, uh, bad games. You know, teams are going to have bad games. Okay, make this be that bad game, yeah. And show what you're really capable of that we've seen all year long. Yeah. But, I mean, this isn't like November. Like we were, we were having a concern in November when they weren't playing well. But we were saying it's the beginning of the year. They have to just get going. And look what happened. And now we're at this stage in the season where they had a, a, a mini rough stretch right now. But the way that this team just rallies together and bands together, you don't expect it to continue. No. Kemper had a bad game. When's the last time he's had a really like bad game like that? It's been a while. You know what I mean? So let's just chalk it up to a bad game, a bad three games, if you want to say. That ha- happens from time to time. And let's just see how they play on 
Sunday against Winnipeg. If it's another stinker, uh, it's going to be an interesting show on Monday. <laughs> Very interesting show on Monday. So um, any last words before we wrap this thing up? Uh, we got to write the ship against Winnipeg and let's do it against Stasny. Yeah. You always, you always want that. Yeah. So yeah, just get back on track and, and a win will solve all of these ills. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it went because now you'll have 118, you'll be tied for the franchise record and everything, it, everything, everybody will feel a lot better. They'll just take mm-hmm. you know, this whole, all of this talk about, I I'm just so scared right now. Like it'll at least put that on pause for a yeah. little while, but we shall see. So uh, Kyle and I will be back tomorrow to discuss that Winnipeg game on Tuesday's episode. We're planning on doing a crossover with Armando from the locked on Panthers show to kind of have a, a number one seed crossover. Did they clinch that yet? I didn't really. Yes. Say, they, that is done. That is that's set in stone. They have a letter next to their name or their, their, uh, okay. Yeah. I think, I think they are X now. Well, they had, I mean, they clinched the, um, I think they clinched the East. Was it not yesterday? Let me see here. Uh, yes, they, they have a Z. Okay. So they, they are clinched. So we have our number one seeds. So that's what we were waiting for was for them to clinch because we did it so long ago. <laughs> uh, a a yeah. ZZ top show. Yes. If you will. Oh, I love it. I love it. So uh, that is scheduled for Tuesday. The two number one seeds doing a crossover show. Uh, but like I said, Kyle and I will be back to discuss the Winnipeg game and uh, anything else that might happen. We got more Pablo Francois news. We'll talk about it. But until then, uh, we'll see everybody on Monday. And he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli, and it's the Locked On Avalanche podcast. Thank you for tuning in, everybody, and making it your first listen of the day. We'll see you guys tomorrow.